Today's video is entitled Dimensional Analysis Part 2. I previously made, of course, Dimensional Analysis Part 1, where we went over how the units work out for the answers for some physics calculations. In this video, we're going to go over Dimensional Analysis for unit conversions. Okay, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And when I look at my YouTube links, I see that so many people who watch our videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe. Click the notifications bell. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive. And don't forget to share this video. In addition, I have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website, where they're looking for tons of practice problems, example problems with all the solutions. We have puzzles, games, and we have a bunch of activities that you can do with PHET online simulations. It's all there. And of course, the link is in the description below. And you can link to the previous video in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But let's get started. This is dimensional analysis. And we are going to, for our first problem, convert miles per hour to meters per second. And we are going to start off by saying that we are going 65 miles per hour. Now, you can see we have miles per hour here. We want to have meters per second. So we got to convert all both the miles and the hours. The miles, of course, into meters, and the hours, of course, into seconds. Now, I'm going to do, I believe, the miles first. Now, in order to convert from one unit to another, you need a conversion factor. Okay, we want to convert miles to meters. So what is the conversion factor for miles to meters? Now, not, maybe people don't know this, or you have to look it up first, which I just looked it up on the internet. Google, Google, Google. And it says that one mile is equal to 1,609 meters, approximately. So this is the conversion factor. We're going to take the one mile and put it either on the bottom or the top of this fraction. And we're going to take the 1,609 meters and put it in the other bottom or top of this fraction. Now, the way I like to think of this is I want to get rid of miles. I want to get out of miles and into meters. I have miles here in the top. That means that the miles has to go on the bottom and the meters goes on the top because that allows me to cancel the miles. And now you can see that on the top, I have my units of meters. So now if you look across here, we're really in meters per hour. Now, we want to get rid of the hours and get into seconds. So what conversion factors do we need? Now, I'm going to do this first two steps because we know that one hour is 60 minutes. So I'm going to put in there one hour, 60 minutes. I want to get rid of the hours and get into minutes. So I put the hour on top because this hour is on the bottom, and that allows me to cancel those. And now you can see we're in meters per minute. But we want to be in meters per second, and one minute is 60 seconds. So therefore, we do the same thing again. We can cancel the minutes, put the minutes in the top, seconds on the bottom. And now we can get our answer, which we simply get by taking 65, multiplying it by all the things in the top, then dividing by all the things in the bottom, 65 times 1,609 times 1 times 1, divided by 1 to 1, and then 60 times 60, like that. And you will get that that's 29 meters per second. Now, that is how you go through that unit conversion. You can see it's a multi-step conversion. Now, we can maybe skip one step. Let's just go maybe show you how we, how we might do that. We're going to basically do the same thing, 65 miles per hour. We're going to conv convert the meters uh, and miles the same way. So now we're in meters per hour. Now, you might remember because you have here 60 and 60, and 60 times 60 is 3,600. So we could also say that in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. Most people know that or can kind of come up with that. But of course, either way, you get the same answer. OK? So that's how you do, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how you do a simple uh, unit conversion dimensional analysis problem. OK, maybe one that's maybe a little bit more applicable if you're working in science and physics, and we want to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second. Really the same process. We need a conversion factor. Now, we want to, we will have kilometers per hour here. We want to get meters per second. So we know that one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So And we know that one hour is from our previous slide is 3,600 seconds. We can use both of those to do this conversion. We have kilometers up here. So we're going to put the one kilometer automatically goes on the bottom. Whatever is up here goes on the bottom. One kilometer, 1,000 meters goes on the top, cancels the meters. And then the hours is here next. And we're going to do that. We're going to put the one hour on the top and the 3,600 seconds on the bottom. Once again, we're going to take 95, multiply by 1,000, and then divide by 3,600. 
and you get that that is 26.4 meters per second. Okay? I think it's relatively straightforward as long as you think about, okay, I want to convert from kilometers to meters. I need a conversion factor because one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. And then I want to convert hours to seconds, and one hour has 3,600 seconds in it. So those two times are equal. And then you just got to remember to place the unit, the number with the unit, either in the, in the opposite place, like this is the top and this is the bottom. Then they'll cancel. All right? Like you can see here, we got rid of all the units. All we have is meters left. And here we got rid of all the units. All we have here is seconds left. Okay. Let's do a few more. This time, we're going to talk about the star that is closest to the Earth, besides the Sun, of course, and that is Alpha Centauri. Now, there are actually a, that's actually a set of three stars. That's uh, Alpha Centauri, A, B, and C. And the one that's the closest is C, and it's actually called Proxima Centauri because it's the most approximate to us, or the closest one. And it is 4.25 light years from the sun, excuse me, from the earth. And we want to know uh, how, how far that is in meters, okay? Now, you usually don't convert light years to meters, but it's a little bit interesting. So 4.25 light years, well, one light year, the distance that light travels in one year is 6 trillion miles, okay? So that's going to be our conversion factor. Now, I put down here approximately because it's a little less, but it's approximately uh, 6 trillion miles. And we're going to figure this out in miles and kilometers. So that's our conversion factor. And that we can write that as 6 times 10 to the 12th miles. So we have our conversion factor here. We put one light year in the bottom because that allows us to cancel light years. Then we have uh, 6 times 10 to the 12th miles. And that is 25.5 times 10 to the 12th miles. Now, we, that's why we usually don't talk about the distance to stars in miles, of course, because or meters or kilometers even, because it's really a lot. So we talk about the number of light years. It makes sense for the great distances that uh, span that are between the stars. Okay, so now we have the same value here, and we're going to convert into kilometers. And one kilometer is 0 0.62 miles. So therefore, we can put the mile on the bottom because we want to be able to cancel the mile. The kilometer goes on the top with the 1, and you get that that's 41.1 times 10 to the 12th kilometers. Okay? That's the closest star. Most stars are much farther away. Okay? That's that one. And the next one we have is we're going to convert euros into dollars. Now, I actually am from the United States, but I'm living in Germany for the past 10 years. So, you know, when you first come over here, you're trying to figure, okay, what's, is it more or less, more euros or more dollars? And I can never remember, we divide or do we multiply? So this is a good way to not get that all mixed up. Let's just say we have something we want to buy that's 75 euros and we want to know how many dollars that is. Well, at the time of this video, the conversion rate was one euro is 1.08 dollars. It's kind of low at this point. Strong dollar. And so we got to figure out. Now you get you kind of think, I always think about okay, do I got to multiply by 1.08 or divide by 1.08? Well, if you do the same thing as we've done in the previous, you have the conversion factor. You know that you have euros here. That means the one euro has to go on the bottom, so you can cancel that. That means the 1.08 dollars has to go on the top because you cancel the euros and you're left with dollars. So in order to convert from euros to dollars, you multiply by 1.08. So if you want to buy something that's 75 euros, you're going to have to pay $81. Now, you could go back in the opposite direction. In this case, you're going to divide. So we have $45, and we want to uh, convert into euros. We use the same conversion factor. But you'll notice this time, instead of multiplying, we're going to put the dollars in the bottom. So therefore, we're going to uh, divide by 1.08, and you get 41.7 euros. All right? So I think that's, uh, uh, that's a very helpful thing and a good way to know how to calculate between money, okay? Different um, units. What do we call those things? Different. I can't think of the English word. Okay. Uh, so now we want to do one we might use in a medical setting. Let's say we have a patient, like a child who or a patient who has 35, who weighs 35 pounds. Okay. I put down here mass. Actually, that's not really appropriate. But let's just say they weigh, they weigh 35 pounds. And they have a medicine, and they're supposed to receive 2.5 milligrams per kilogram. That would be the mass. 
Okay, this is the weight, 35 pounds, and this is the, is the dosage is 2.5 milligrams per kilogram. Now you can see here, we have a weight in pounds and we have a mass in kilograms. So we gotta first convert the pounds into kilograms and one kilogram is 2.2 pounds approximately. So we put that in for our conversion and we get that that is 15.9 kilograms. All right. And therefore, we now we can figure out how much medicine we have to give because we know we will have to give 2.5 milligrams per kilogram and we can convert. Now you want to make sure that you either multiply or divide correctly. Now I didn't put an equal sign here because these two things are not equal but it's 2.5 milligrams you know, per kilogram. We want to convert and we want to get rid of the kilogram so the kilogram goes on the bottom and you can cancel and therefore, therefore you can see you would give 39.75 milligrams for that dosage for that 35 pound person. Okay, okay, there we go. Let's see how what we got next here. Okay, I think this is our last example. Now this is a, a good one too when you go shopping and you want to get some nice fresh strawberries and you can see the sign, you would see a sign that might say 350 grams will cost you $2.50. But you need uh, 1.75 kilograms for your recipe for strawberry cake and you want to know, okay, how much you got to pay for that. So we can see here that we have a mass and a mass, but this is in grams and this is in kilograms. And then we can see we have the dollars over here for a certain number of grams. Now, we could convert this 350 grams to kilograms, but I think it's easier to convert this kilograms into grams, and then we'll see how that works out for the dollars and what we're gonna have to pay. So I'm gonna convert 1.75 kilograms into grams. Now you should remember that one kilogram is 1,000 grams, and you should remember how to do this pretty straightforward, what the answer should be. But you can see we put the kilograms on the bottom, Put the grams on the top and we have 1,750 grams, okay? And we pay $2.50 for 350. So we can convert that by uh, taking our 1,750. This is our conversion factor down here, okay? These two things are not equal to each other like these two, but you can see it costs 250 for 350 grams. So we can set up the same idea with our conversion factor. We put the grams on the bottom, and then uh, they cancel. You can see then we're left with dollars on the top. So in order to do this, we gotta take 1,750, multiply it by 2.5, and then divide by 350, and that will cost you $12.50 to buy 1,750 grams, or 1.75 kilograms of strawberries if it costs $2.50 for 350 grams, okay? So there you go. That is part number two for dimensional analysis. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Please subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll, of course, see you in the next video.